This is session three now on Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. I, therefore, a prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthily of the calling to which you were called. And the last time, last time we we looked at the act of God's calling, and this time I want us to look at the fruit or the effect or the goal or the end point or the hope of the calling. Like he says here in verse 4, there is one body and one spirit just as you were called in the one hope of your calling. So I take this meaning of calling not to be the act by which we were made alive, but the destiny, both immediate and long eternal term, the destiny of our hope because of the act of God's calling and now becoming the destiny of our calling. So, Father, show us from Ephesians and the rest of Paul and maybe Peter the beauty, the glory, the immeasurable greatness, the unfathomable sweetness of this calling, so that our walk is brought into conformity to it. That's what he's after. Show us, Father, how this therefore, because of all the things he said back in chapters 1 to 3 about the glory of this calling would result in our walking worthy of it. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's begin here in chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Some of those are eternal, like our election, but some of them are future and would be part of our hope, the hope of our calling. So everything heaven has to give is part of the hope of our calling. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. The day is coming. I can hardly wait when John Piper will sin no more, but will be blameless before the presence of God. Oh, what a glorious experience to have an absolutely clean conscience with no sin for any of our eternity in his presence. That's part of the hope of our calling. And Peter, I mean, John says, if you've got that hope in you, purify yourself as he is pure, which is another way of saying walk worthy of your calling. In love, he predestined us for adoption. So adoption, of course, happens at the very moment of our calling into Christ, but it has implications that go forever, as we'll see in a moment with the inheritance. According to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, it is going to be a great thing that our future will be endless, happy praise of the glory of God's grace with which he blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. There's a huge part of the hope of our calling. Tomorrow I will be forgiven. The day after that, forgiven. The year after that, forgiven. The decade after that, forgiven. And the millennium and eternity after that, forgiveness. Walk worthy of your calling into an eternity of forgiven sin. Let's go to chapter 2. You were at that time, you Gentiles were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. That was the condition before our calling. Now, but now, in Christ Jesus, you have, you who once were far off, all that's far off, have been brought 
near by the blood of Christ. So you are near to Christ, not separated from him. You are near and in the commonwealth of Israel, not separated from it. You are participants in and near the covenants of promise. All the promises of God are yes for you. You do have hope and you are not without God. You have God. All of that is the hope of our calling. And we were brought near. That is, we were called sovereignly by God and brought near to all of this riches. Walk worthy of this, Paul is saying in 4.1. In him you also are being built in together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. We are becoming a fit dwelling place for God. Walk worthy of that amazing calling. And it's individual as well as corporate that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You're not just going to be filled up with God corporately because as a people, you are the dwelling place of God. But individually, we come to know the love of Christ, the breadth and length and height and depth, and thus be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's happening better and better as we grow into him, according to this prayer in 3.14 to 19. Walk worthy of being filled with all the fullness of God and hoping in it. Chapter 2, verse 7 is probably in Ephesians the best summary of our future and the calling that we have been brought to hope in. He made you alive. That's what he says here in verse 5. This is verse 7. So that in the coming ages, this is the hope of our calling, in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace. Immeasurable. They are infinite. They will never run out and they will never become boring. In kindness toward us in Christ Jesus, God will spend an eternity showing us, lavishing on us, infinite wealth of grace in kindness. Now let's go outside Ephesians just for a moment and confirm whether we're on the right track. Here's 1 Corinthians 1, nine. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son. So we have union with Christ and fellowship with Christ for the rest of eternity because we were called into that. That's the hope of our calling. We have it now. We'll have it forever. Walk worthy. Walk worthy of living in fellowship with the Son of God. Here's 1 Thessalonians 2. We exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk worthily of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. So all those blessings are summed up in We're going into the kingdom. We're going into the glory. Walk worthily of the God who calls you into that hope. And here's 1 Peter 5. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you so that you are perfectly fit to enjoy this glory in Christ forever. Walk worthy of being destined after suffering to have eternal glory in Christ. And that brings us back now to Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1. I pray that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, God's calling. In other words, I've just spent 10 minutes describing the most glorious things in the world. And probably some of you are bored out of your mind because this is not happening. This prayer is not yet answered in your life. And others of you are beginning to awaken because Paul has prayed this and you have prayed this for yourself. I pray this every day. Virtually every day I say, Oh God, open my eyes that I may behold wonders in your word. This means the hope that I just described is boring and blank unless this prayer is answered 
that we can know it, experience it for what it really is. So, therefore, because of chapters 1 through 3 and the glories of it, I am willing to be a prisoner and I am serving you and urging you now to walk, not according to some list, but according to a sovereign act of God by which you were made alive and an immeasurably great and beautiful and satisfying future. Walk worthy of it. Next time we'll talk about what that means, worthily of it. <laughs>